So, welcome this afternoon to another Sunday Inspiration. Um, I'll be reading from 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. I might go on a little bit. Um, so basically, this letter, 1 John, was sent to a group of believers who were in the midst of an unsettling situation. Some of them had abandoned faith in Jesus, as it had been first taught to them, they found the proclamation that God had come in a human body impossible to reconcile with the common Greek idea that the flesh is evil and only spirit is good. So I guess it sounds like they were confused why would God come in a human body and you know when the flesh is so evil. Uh, despite their denial of the Messiah, their immoral lives and lack of practical love they claimed to know God and belong to God. They asserted that their spiritual insight put them above the rest of the group, which they demonstrated by deserting the fellowship. Those left behind were deeply shaken, uncertain about everything that had been taught to them. Um, this letter emphasizes godly living and practical caring as the signs of those who genuinely know God. Um, so verse 3 says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Um, this is a message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Um, that's from chapter 1. Um, chapter 2, it says, it starts out, I write this to you so that you will not sin. If anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Um, it goes on further to say, do not love the world or anything in the world. Um, this is verse 15, chapter 2. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Um, it's all about knowing Jesus. Um, in this little booklet, uh, my booklet says, uh, this is from a Meditations Daily Devotional. God tells us that as Christians, we find our purpose not in what we might become, but rather in that we have come to know him. Um, it talks about living a life of thankfulness. Um, such a life is defined by the commands we follow as we live for him. The commands by themselves do not make us better. By themselves, the commands would only show us how bad we are. But God already gave us holiness and perfection through Jesus. Um, this knowing him is not a cold knowledge that just takes the truth as fact instead it recognizes the blessings God grants in Jesus we have been united with God into the warmth of companionship with God we know Jesus as our dearest friends as friends of God we're blessed to spend more time increasing our knowledge of his goodness and glory and that in turn leads to increased willingness to follow what he commands this change does not happen by force, nor are we Christians pressured to become something different. The change happens as we spend more time with our Savior by being in his word. As his sermons indeed sink into us, Jesus becomes even more dear to our hearts and more precious to our souls. And we grow to love in a more Christ-like manner. Our obedience to God's commands give life a purpose. Our connection to Jesus appears in the works done out of love for God. Our life, led by the commands, shows itself in a willingness to follow where the Savior leads and show we have come to know him. <clears throat> and this passage also um, recommends to read Genesis chapter 23 and 24 uh, and concludes with, Dear God, thanks be to you for the love you show in Christ's forgiveness. Increase my obedience to show I have come to know Jesus. Amen. You know, and that's the thing. It doesn't ha you don't have to have some elaborate prayer, elaborate way to reach out to people. Um, it's just caring for the nation, and caring for people in your community. Um, 
and there are people that are going to hate what you do and come to resist you, reject you, reject what you're about no matter what, you know, they might find fault with you for whatever, um, <clears throat> and I just wanted to bring a message uh, to everybody, and I'm, like I say all the time, I'm far from perfect, <laughs> so... You know, I am, I'm not out here to judge anything. I just saw something on YouTube about Obama and Michelle were guests on Ellen show, on the Ellen show, and, you know, some of, part of the episode brought tears to my eyes. I mean, I may be against the term, you know, same-sex marriage, but it's, to me, it's more civil union, but I'm not going to get into that, cause that's... That's not really what I'm here about. Um, if people want to consider marriage, whatever. I feel that everybody has a right to have that relationship with somebody and to be recognized and to get the insurance and whatever they need, irregardless of what gender partner they have. Um, it's about loving the person. And that's kind of what this message is, is how to love Jesus and be daring to share with other people i mean irregardless of what might happen i mean people are going to reject it that's reality but thanks for tuning in and i just wanted to make this you know under seven or eight minutes and i'll try to have more frequent sunday ones um it might just happen every two weeks depending on my schedule i've got a lot of things going on and coming up and as you can see, I've been working on some stuff. I do have to color my picture here. Um, I'm going to do some little artwork, some original artworks, and all I need now is to get um, frames for it. But anyway, thanks for tuning in.